Hello and welcome to America Latina Story. This is the story of the very first steps in Mayan archaeology and how an explorer had to resort to buying a city to be able to explore it. John Lloyd Stephens was born into a well-to-do family in New Jersey in 1805 and grew up in New York. As early as 1834, driven by his passion for archaeology and voyage, he embarked on a life of travel which led him to visit sites in Greece, the Middle East and Egypt. As so often in this kind of adventure, chance played a significant role in the events that followed. To guide him during his journey through the Holy Land, Stephens used a map drawn by an Englishman named Frederick Catherwood, renowned for his architectural knowledge and drawing skills. While in London on his return trip, Stephens visited Catherwood. Catherwood told his new acquaintance about an account he had just read in the London Literary Gazette, written by a certain Juan Galindo, a military administrator for the government of the young Federal Republic of Central America, sent in 1836 to explore remote parts of Yucatan. In his account, Colonel Galindo described hitherto unknown ruins of mysterious cities lost in the jungle. Of Anglo-Irish origin, Galindo was the true pioneer of the first Mayan sites discoveries, notably those of Payanque and Copan. Stephens and Castlewood were excited by the prospects of this exceptional piece of news and decided to travel to Central America to learn more about Galindo's findings. Passing through America, Stephens succeeded through his political connections in being appointed ambassador for Central America. This posting was to facilitate their expedition considerably. So the two men landed in Belize at the end of 1839 and began their difficult journey to Copan, 300 miles inland, in an unhealthy tropical country. Their destination lay roughly where the giant trees of the virgin forest give way to a cover of compact shrubs that covers the entire limestone table of the Yucatan Peninsula. Upon their arrival at the site, Stephens and Castlewood were amazed and taken aback by what they had encountered. They were the first modern Westerners to contemplate the remains of an unknown and sophisticated civilization. How could it be that this civilization and its people had disappeared from history without leaving traces or traditions besides those forgotten ruins? Quickly, the two men organized the excavations. It was a matter of clearing the monuments from the embrace of the forest that shrouded them, so that they could be listed and measured, and to enable Catherwood to proceed with his sketches. They thus brought to light pyramids, large courtyards framed by terraces, monumental staircases, idols, statues of dignitaries, rows of sculptures of skulls, altars, all these under the concerned gaze of bands of monkeys and howling parrots. However, they could never find the famous gigantic stone hammock with an entwined couple oscillating between two pyramids, as described by the historian and poet Francisco Antonio de Fuentes y Guzman in 1700 in his book Recordation Florida. Catherwood worked in precarious conditions. He had to wear gloves against the mosquitoes and often stood for hours in the mud 
with his waterproofs covering him like a tent, his notebook or his camera lucida in his hands. The main difficulty came from the unknown artistic canons he encountered. How could he reproduce them on paper? Often, he had to wait until the angle of the sun's rays brought out the carved forms. However, it wasn't long before problems arose. Stephens and Castlewood were puzzling and disturbing the few inhabitants of the neighboring village who wanted them to go away. Stephens, after long considerations, did find an answer to their maneuvers by buying the entire site for $50. So, in the evenings before sleeping, he dreamed of dismantling the whole city and transporting it stone by stone by sea to New York and sheltering it in a specially created museum. If Stephens could not fulfill his dream, he brought back from a second trip to the same location many of the Mayan artifacts and relics that were exhibited in 1842 in New York's first art museum, the Rotonda. Unfortunately, a fire destroyed almost all the works displayed and hundreds of Castlewood drawings and watercolors. Still, Stephens had recorded on paper his many observations and intuitions about the civilization he had discovered. The way was now open that would allow Mayan studies to develop. Stephens died in New York in 1852 from malaria he contracted in Copan. Shortly before, he had met by accident in California with a German merchant with whom he had conversed at length, a certain Heinrich Schliemann, who would one day unearth the ruins of Troy. As for Castlewood, he perished in 1854 on his way to America during the sinking of the steamer Arctic. The account of these voyages and excavations is contained in two volumes entitled Incidents of Travel in Central America, Chiapas and Yucatan, illustrated with engravings by Castlewood. Edgar Poe wrote that this was probably the best travelogue ever published. Indeed, the book is a pleasure to read, written in a lively style underpinned by humor. Stephens goes from scientific observations to the small miseries of the daily life of the isolated explorer, and from the ridicule of the local politics to philosophical considerations. As for Castlewood drawings, engravings, and watercolors, they are remarkable and manage to communicate the wonderful poetry of the untouched places and ruins on which the two men had laid their eyes. Thank you for watching this program. Do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel. This is all for now. Goodbye.